What's up guys, Rhino here and welcome to my latest FIFA 18 World Cup video. This one guys is going to be my Group E predictions and also the combined 11 of course from players which I have in my club currently. Um, so group, G uh, group E contains Brazil, Switzerland, Costa Rica and Serbia. So kind of well-rounded group. I mean Brazil you look at as you know like the, the big side in the group but the other three sides are fairly well matched. They're, obviously Costa Rica did well at the last World Cup. Serbia have got a few decent players and Switzerland are by no means sort of pushovers. They'll certainly be pretty confident of getting through themselves and maybe even giving a giving Brazil a decent uh, match in the in the first game of the group actually, which could be quite an important one. Uh, but I'll get on to what I think is going to happen in that in a bit. I'll do the the sort of combined 11 first, see what players I've got. I'll go down the usual route of starting with the teams, which I think I've probably got the least amount of players from. So obviously Costa Rica, there, I've only got three. Uh, luckily, I do have Kalon Navas, which is quite good. So I'll throw him in. There's Bolaños and Ruiz, but I can't imagine either of those two are going to play. Uh, I'd be pretty disappointed if they are, if I haven't got any better players than that. Uh, probably the next place to go, I would have thought, would be yeah I'll, I'll go to Serbia can't imagine I've got many there so we've got Feza a few other sort of fairly poor players there but again I'll just throw them in so just swap the striker there I've got the set as 4-3-3 at the moment I don't know if that is going to be the formation as usual I'll probably just change as and when I need to throughout uh, Milivojevic can go in and so can Feza but these guys aren't really going to get a look in. I'll chuck them down at the, on the reserves just in case they do make the bench at the end. But to be honest, they'll probably get removed. Um, obviously, Switzerland as well. Switzerland have got a few half decent players. There's Burki, uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, Memedy, Fernandez, Vogo, and Frilla. So Burki can, well, to be fair, he's not even going to make it in goals. We've got Kaylor Navas. So. Berkey will definitely be on the bench. Uh, Mehmedi can go in instead of Bolaños. And what have we got here? Fernandez can play in midfield for now. And Vogel's not going to get in goal. He won't even make the squad, to be fair. We'll just um, we'll throw him out. And Freuler in midfield, who won't really make the squad either, unfortunately. But we'll keep him around as, as a possible sub. Just like these guys. But I'll, I'll keep... I'll keep Berkey there because I'm I'm sure he'll probably make the bench unless I've got a really good uh, Brazilian goalkeeper, but I'm not sure. I've, I've got a lot of Brazilian players, so it's possible that I do, but we'll soon find out now. So I'll go through. So look at this. I mean, we got some real top quality players here. So Coutinho, Paulinho, Casemiro, Danny Alves, Gabriel Jesus, Renato Agosto. Uh, I think I'm running out of space here, so I'll just throw a few of these in quickly. So I'll throw Coutinho on the right. We'll put Paulinho into midfield. Instead of Milivojevic, we'll put Casemiro in midfield as well. Danny Alves for sure can play at right back. Uh, Gabriel Jesus can go up front. As you can see, this is going to be very much a full Brazil team. Um, obviously, I've got to have at least one player from each other nation in there. But it's going to be you know, a lot of Brazilian players here, which is understandable. Um, I don't think Renato Agosto is going to get into my starting lineup just because I'm going to keep Feza in there. I think he's obviously not, you know, not that bad of a player for for a Serbia player, one of the best ones I have. So I'll I'll keep him uh, sticking around in there. I'm obviously going to, you know, I'm going to keep hold of uh, Kel Navas to be the Costa Rican player. I will use Ricardo Rodriguez as a Swiss player, so that would mean that I can then just put all Brazilian players in the other positions. Um, but if, if I have to stick with Mepany, then I'll stick with him. I will take out some of these guys just to make it a little bit easier to see. Because I've got so many Brazilians that I can imagine there's going to be a... You know, the bench is going to be mainly Brazilian as well. And these players that aren't getting into the starting lineup Because a lot of these players are in the same position. So you can see straight away there. I've got Fernandinho. Uh, there's a Douglas Costa, Lima... There's Gustavo, even Diego's, you know, it seems like he's been around for ages. There's Danilo as well, not a bad player. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll put I'll put Coutinho on the left. I know he's also class of right wing here, but 
He always played off the left for Liverpool. Um, the only reason he can't really do that for Brazil is obviously because Neymar. So he does play on the right for them. But in this particular situation, because I don't have Neymar, I'll put Coutinho on the left and put Douglas Costa on the right. Be quite a nice balanced attack. Um, for sure, don't really need any sort of changes in the midfield. It's just the it's just the centre backs really. The the defence is kind of the issue that I've got here. Uh, Fernandinho, obviously. I believe he's played centre back before, but I wouldn't sort of like to put him in there. Similar to maybe like Luis Gustavo as well. Let's just get rid of some of these guys as well. They're certainly not going to be involved. Just to create a little bit more space so I can go through. I possibly some of my Brazilian centre backs who are just like a little bit lower rated if I've got any. I'm hoping I've got some. Uh I don't. Wow. I've got Fagner, who's a right back. Tardelli, he's not gonna get anywhere near Nero Souza. Nors Veverton, Luan, Diego. Very, very poor players, to be fair. I, I can't really say that I've ever seen many of them play at all. Um, which is not ideal. So, Danilo is actually going to go in centre-back. I'm pretty sure he's played there before. I think I've seen him play at centre-back before. So, I'm I'm not going to be too fussed to sort of put him in. I'm almost tempted to drop Casemiro in there, six foot one. I feel like he could do a job in centre back. Um, could be an option, but then it's whether like maybe Gustavo or Fernandinho. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to go Fernandinho. I'm, I'm more confident that he's done that for Man City in the past when they've had a lot of injuries. So I'm, I'm going to go for that. Obviously, it's going to be a very makeshift defence. Unfortunately, it's not going to be. You know, it wouldn't exactly fill me with confidence if I if I went into a game while I was supporting a team that had that back line. Uh, especially with how like attacking Danny Alves is just bombing down the wing constantly. He'd be ex leaving the two centre-backs very exposed a lot. So I wouldn't be overly confident with that team. But it's it's what I've got to work with here, really. Uh, Manager-wise, we'll go for Tite, the Brazilian manager. Uh, I'm just wondering what we're going to have on the bench. Because obviously I've got some of these players here and I'm sure these guys will be involved 100% um, it's just a case of the players from the other nations that I've obviously just kind of binned off um, and what they've got to really offer me so in Europe there was Serbia who have Milivojevic who isn't too bad there's Stoilkovic who's a striker and I do need a striker on the bench uh, we've got I'm going to put Mehmedi. He's the sort of player, he's actually not that bad in real life, to be fair, and he can play up front. So I'm actually going to put Mehmedi as the striker, even though he's class a left mid there. Uh, and there's also, of course, Costa Rica, who I don't believe I have really had a lot. No, well, Bolaños. Mm, do I put in Bolaños? I don't think I do. No, I, I, can't, I can't justify Bolaños. I'll put Freuler in there. Um... And maybe just a Brazilian player, maybe like Fagner. Fagner will be okay. Uh, he, he, to be honest, he's somebody I've not seen play, but he, you know, if he's been called up to the Brazil squad, he's obviously been doing quite well recently in, you know, I presume he plays in the Brazilian league. I've not heard of him in Europe, so um, certainly not like an awful player to put in there. So I'm, you know, I'd, I'd be happy with that. So I think that's probably what I'm going to leave the team as, guys. It's it's a fairly solid team. Obviously, got the one Costa Rican player, one Swiss player, one Serbian player. Um, and then pretty much all just Brazil. That's partly due to obviously, you know, Brazil being the so called stronger team. A lot of their players are just better than a lot of the players from like Costa Rica and Serbia, especially. Um, and then also just due to the players that I have packed. I've, you know, a lot of these players are higher rated. So I, I may have packed over the over like the period of playing this game, I may have actually packed a similar number of players from each of the nations. But obviously, through doing various SBCs, I would have put some of the players from like Serbia or Costa Rica into the SPCs because their ratings were so low so it's left me with a large number of Brazilians and not as many for those nations um, but the team's going to be Kaelo Navas in goal, very respectable goalkeeper, won multiple Champions League so no issue there, uh, defence got two pretty attacking fullbacks in Dani Alves and Ricardo Rodriguez but again very well seasoned fullbacks plenty of experience, uh, the defence so the, so the centre back pair I mean sorry is obviously not as experienced playing in centre back. Two really good talented players, nonetheless, though, in Danilo, uh, who you know he can, can uh, he can actually consider himself very unfortunate not to be 
sort of, you know, like at the front of the pecking order at like club level and international level, he's just unfortunate that he's at a club, you know, where he's got somebody like Carl Walker ahead of him at right back. Um, and obviously Brazil have always been blessed with a lot of very good right backs. Like obviously Danny Alves, the first one springs to mind, but even before that, there was Mike on as well that was challenging Alves. So Danilo's never really been anywhere near. Uh, Fernandinho, brilliant midfielder. Uh, but I've seen him play centre back a couple of times. I'm pretty sure for Man City, so I'm going to throw him in there, just due to no other options. Um, and I don't really feel confident to put maybe like Casemiro in there, just because I can't say that I have actually seen him do that role before. So I'm going to. I've gone for Fernandinho, midfield. Obviously Casemiro, Paulinho as well. He's been superb for Brazil uh, over the last sort of few seasons or so, and he's certainly sort of improved since he's moved to Barcelona. I think that that period away in China did him, uh, you know, like the world of good. And maybe just when he was at Tottenham, it was it, the Premier League just wasn't quite suited to him and he wasn't suited to it. Um, it doesn't make him a bad player, you know, like, you know, different players make different uh, transfers throughout their careers that just don't work. They may make one one mistake and it can define them. Like, I know a lot of people look at Paulinho and, you know, think of how bad he was and such a flop he was at Tottenham, but it doesn't make him a bad footballer. Um, We've got Feza as a Serbian player in midfield. Very sort of combative midfielder, fairly solid. Um, you know, certainly if I had Matic, he would get in ahead, but unfortunately I'm not sort of blessed enough to have him at the moment. Um, and the front line is obviously superb. I mean, Coutinho, what a talent. Uh, he, he would be, you'd like to think that he would do absolute bits of this World Cup probably create a lot of goals, maybe score a few of his classic long-range efforts as well. Uh, Douglas Costa on the right, obviously is not quite Neymar, but Douglas Costa, again, a very speedy, tricky winger who can be a threat if he gets any opportunities, if he gets game time at this World Cup. I'm not sure if he will. Obviously, you know, there's like Coutinho and Neymar, and then maybe even like Willian might be slightly ahead of him in the pecking order. Um Possibly even Douglas Costa is not, not even in the squad. I mean, I know there was a few sort of high-profile um, absentees from Brazil's squad, and he could be one of them. I haven't, you know, I, I, I did look at it when it came out, but I, I can't remember exactly, but he's the sort of player he may have been left out possibly because I'm, I can't imagine that he is a guaranteed starter. So because they've got so many talented players, there's for sure going to be talented players maybe like a Douglas Costa who have missed out similar to like the French team with like Martial missing out um, you know like Spain like Fabregas missing out so it's, it's, it happens in all teams unfortunately um, and then obviously up front leading the line we've got Gabriel Jesus um, he's been superb for Man City considering how young he is he, is, he has been brilliant he's a really sort of he's a natural finisher so very good addition to this particular team um, certainly would be very useful if I was to even use this team in game so yeah uh, all in all very good team obviously the bench got Berkey, Fagner, Freula, Luis Gustavo, Lima, Augusto and Mehmedi decent options um, the defenders you know like obviously have only got Fagner not the best defender probably put Luz Gustavo down there as he's probably more likely to drop into defence if he was needed to than somebody like Freuler. Um, not a lot of pace in the bench so it'd be a case of just trying to like sort of see out a match with possession but if it was to come down to trying to play on the break and on the counter maybe not the best. Um, but yeah overall sort of like a fairly solid team and I, I'd be pretty confident that might do quite well in the tournament itself as well as in game, um, certainly a team that I'd be not afraid to have a go at trying to win the World Cup with. I mean, I wouldn't like to sort of guarantee that it would. Obviously, you've got players that are really badly off chem, and it's not ideal to have a goalkeeper that's off chem because um, he certainly wouldn't perform well enough. But you know, overall, not a bad team. Um, so, want to go back to obviously like predictions for this group, uh, how I think it probably pan out. So, Brazil, obviously, hundred percent favourites. I'm going to stick with that. I would say that they're going to win it. To be honest, they are actually my personal sort of favourites for the entire tournament. I think it's finally their time again. It's it's been a it's been such a long time since they've won the World Cup. Obviously, like 2002. Um, and for a team that's won it as many times as they have, it's quite a long wait. Um, and obviously, with the group they're in, that they should certainly get through. 
and I'm pretty confident they go from strength to strength there. And they're obviously going to be extremely motivated after the last tournament, how they got humiliated. I mean, they'll want to put that right for starters, and they've got a much, much better team than last time. They had good players last time, but they were so reliant on players like Neymar and Thiago Silva, whereas this time around, you know, they've got a much better goalkeeper in, you know, well, either Allison or Edison, I believe, that Allison will play. But even if he didn't, you got Edison as backup, much better goalkeepers. Um, obviously, it still looks like they're going to be using like Danny Alves and Marcelo, but obviously, there's nothing really wrong with that. Danny Alves is very experienced. Obviously, Marcelo is still probably arguably the best left back on the planet right now so nothing wrong with that uh center backs Thiago Silva will probably still play but Marquinhos has obviously uh, matured a lot and improved greatly David Luiz I'm not sure if he's in the squad um but he probably wouldn't start if he was anymore so that's obviously to most probably a plus I mean he was a little bit of a weakness in their team in in all honesty um midfield obviously Paulinho's improved a lot your Casemiro has come through now uh, I mean, I try to think what else there is. It's like proper centre midfield. Obviously, Fernandinho, I suppose, off just uh, dropped into defence. There is very good. Um, Renato Augusto, obviously, is supposedly. I mean, they've yeah, they've given him an eighty-five rated, so he must have been doing really well for Brazil, um, despite playing his football in China. So, very good midfield options, and then obviously in, in attack, like I've already mentioned, like Coutinho, Neymar, Willian, Douglas Costa. Um, and then striker options you've got Jesus and then there's also Firmino as well so they've got a lot of very high quality players whereas in the past their striker options you know the main one was like Fred um, and he was just like a laughing stock of the tournament Fred and Joe were like literally the only two they had in the squad so they, I mean they, they never really stood a chance did they that, to be honest they never really stood a chance of getting a goal um, they pretty much had to be put on a plate for them if they're going to get any sort of chance of getting close to scoring. Um, so yeah, definitely Brazil to win the group. Um, I think Switzerland should come second. It's going to be obviously tough for them because the chances are they'll probably lose their first game. So they'll be at a bit of a disadvantage, which could work in a negative way, sort of mentally. But I think they've got enough talent to sort of get through. Obviously, like players like Shakiri, Seferovic, uh, maybe even Barami still playing, uh, Gokhan Inla, uh, Licksteiner, Ricardo Rodriguez, Sommer in goal, Berkey, there's a lot, a lot of very good players, so I'm sure they should be fine. Um, but yeah, obviously that is going to mean that I think that Costa Rica and Serbia aren't going to get it, uh, get through, unfortunately. But I think it's going to be very, very close, but sort of third and fourth with those two. Um, I'm actually probably going to tip Costa Rica to come third just because, you know, obviously really good goalkeeper which is going to help them stay in matches um, play, you know, they obviously did so well at the last tournament as well I think they'll take a lot of confidence from that and they'll, they'll believe that, you know, they're going to games sort of fearless they'll believe they can actually beat any side which would probably be okay against a team like Serbia who don't really have a lot anymore it's, you know, gone on the days when they had such like a world class centre back in Nemanja Vidic um, and you look at their team and sort of think you know they're almost underachieving a little bit but these days it's probably their, their star man is maybe like Matic um, and being a holding midfielder he's not going to be a massive game changer he, he will obviously keep them in games and you know a lot of their games might be sort of nil nil one nil quite he might stabilise the team a little bit but I can't see him being a, like a match winner for them and a game changer. So I think unfortunately they're not going to have enough in an attacking sense to really go and harm any of like Brazil or Switzerland. And I'm going to say probably not Costa Rica either. I, I think Costa Rica may prove as a little bit of a surprise actually to a team like Serbia who do kind of, yeah, like I said, just lack that quality. So just to confirm, I'm going to say from top to bottom, I'll say Brazil, Switzerland, Costa Rica and Serbia. Obviously, that's the team there. Uh, I'll have to see how it all pans out, really. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see Brazil play, just just because of Neymar, to be honest. Um, so, obviously, that, that'll be great. Um, and it'll be interesting to see who they get in the next round because their group is actually paired up with the Germany group, who I, I'll talk about their group in my next uh, prediction video. So, that will be certainly very interesting because... You know, Brazil and Germany are going to want to make sure they both win their groups so they can avoid each other. So certainly there's a lot to play for in that sense. Um, 
two of the you know the massive favourites, and, and I'm sure Brazil probably wouldn't want to meet Germany again just because of what happened last time. Obviously, there is that chance for revenge, but there'd probably be a lot of players in that squad who played in that game who are going to be you know, like really badly scarred from that. So depends how they can mentally deal with it. Um, obviously, they're all big players, so they probably should be fine. But whether or not they want to have that sort of test so early on in the last 16, I'm not so sure. So definitely a lot of pressure to go and win the group for Brazil. But like I said, I'm pretty confident they'll do it. Um, that's going to be the end of the video, though, really, guys. I uh, can't really say much more on it, to be honest. It's, it's just a case of seeing how it goes. I mean, we've seen with a lot of the games so far, you never know how it's going to pan out. There's a lot of matches where you thought that teams would comfortably beat another one but it just hasn't panned out like that because it's the it's the opening game and you, you just don't know you, you have no idea how these teams are going to play unless you've been watching like every single qualification game which i certainly haven't um but yeah obviously if you enjoy the video feel free to you know do the usual stuff like like comment subscribe um but yeah that's gonna be it from me i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one